morning, everybody. We would like just to take this time to give you an all an insight into the utilisation of chitin as a PCN biocontrol agent as part of our risk group. Um, so I'd like to be able to welcome to Mark, Mark Clark from Grampian Growers, who was one of the potato and bulb growers in the risk group. And um, we will take you through some, some questions, which hopefully gives you an idea of what the group actually tackled and, and what it achieved. So my name is Helen Glass and I'm the SAOS facilitator for the risk group. And during this spotlight session, Mark and I hope that we can illustrate how the bottom up approach of risk was the fundamental reason for the group's success. So hopefully, Mark, you can hear me. Uh, so the first question is, tell, tell us, Mark, why controlling PCN in potato and bulb growing is important to these sectors? Uh, thanks, Helen. Morning, everyone. I think a lot of folk would know in terms of, you know, over um, many decades that Scotland has been known as a, a sort of high health area for growing both seed potatoes um, and daffodil bulbs. Uh, in the case of both crops, they both require uh, PCN free land uh, in order to be primarily exported, be it North uh, um, Africa, Middle East, Far East, uh, Europe or USA. The statistics show, and these were, um, were brought to us during the risk group by SASA, that um, as an industry, if we don't do anything in the next 25 to 30 years, um, Perthshire, Fife and Angus will have no PCN free land available to grow seed potatoes um, and bulbs. So in terms of gramping growers, uh, that means in effect we have no business. Quite brutal. Thanks, Mark. So why was the biocontrol approach using chitin favoured by the growers in the group rather than relying on chemical approaches? When we, we sort of started up the, the, the group and we had a, a, a sort of collection of individuals, um, the, the sort of chitin was identified as one of the first avenues. We often use the analogy of, uh, of wheels and spokes. And the, the chitin and the chitin compost was one of these spokes. And in particular, where we were coming from was the, the aspect of timeliness. Um, at Grampian, we were heavily involved in potato breeding, which can be sort of eight to 10 years before any particular variety may or may not come out of that breeding program. So the chitinous compost was, um, it had been identified back in 2012. There was an element of work carried out in, in field um, scale trials with SRUC um, and with some really, really positive results. And um, for whatever reason, it, it wasn't really sort of continued and, and identified as being one of the sort of key options. So the risk group, you know, primarily identified that as one aspect of, of many aspects that um, we believe is, uh, you know, could be really important for the control of PCN. Thanks, Mark. So how, how important was it to have the whole value chain represented in your group? Um, as being MD a Grampian, we sort of live in, in breathe sort of cooperation and collaboration. So we identified really quickly, right from that sort of very first meeting, um, there was a, a sort of huge amount of enthusiasm in the group. There was a huge amount of specialism in the, in the group. Um, and what we identified was to try and get everyone that had a, a sort of key input into the the sort of project of PCN control. So we had, for example, we had them, um, we had a, agronomy companies, we had soil science companies, we had nematology, we had ag chem, um, farmers, bulb growers and potato growers, um, sort of horticultural industry, research and education. So we probably within the first two meetings, we sort of identified who we needed to sit around that table with the expertise and how would we go about, um, you know, sort of pooling pulling all these individuals together, which in effect, you know, everyone on the call today, we've all got day jobs um, and in particular people giving up their time because of the, the sort of severity of what we, we recognise is coming down the train tracks. So that's, that's great. So um, as you've just illustrated there, there were many people around the table and this risk group started off with face-to-face -face meetings and we transitioned very well to the online Zoom meetings. Um, where I was able to use the mute control sometimes. But um, would you like just to tell us, Mark, um, what were, in your opinion, the successes and the legacy of this group? 
Um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 I was going to say there, there, there was many successes, but there still is many successes. You know, if I go through sort of some of the, the sort of highlights of the, um, the sort of five, six month period where we met, um, you know, on a very regular basis, the sort of research and development applications, you know, came out with some really, really sort of positive outcomes, both from a sort of financial perspective um, and an information and, and sort of data perspective. Um, we then went on to create a, a, an industry-wide working group um, under the sort of guidance of, uh, of Mr. McPherson, the, the Minister for Rural and, uh, and Natural Environment, and prior to that, uh, Mary Goujon, um, who was also in, involved in it. So yeah, that, indus fair. that industry working group was really key um, to create a, a fairly um, sizable document uh, that we're now currently working on, um, looking at uh, GHI Plant Health Centre, for example, um, hopefully attracting some sizable, sizable funding. Uh, joint industry funding, we've been in the last 10 days very successful. Uh, Scottish Agronomy, Harper Adams, GHI, HDB and Grampian Growers uh, have attracted a £75,000 postgraduate fellowship student looking at uh, both nematodes for bulbs, stem and bulb bealworm and PCN. So really excited about that. Uh, one of our partners, Angus Horticulture, uh, working with GHI, Plant Health Centre, SASA, SIPA, um, accreditation bodies, looking at composting on a, a large field scale. Uh, again, that's exciting. Uh, and the group has continued pretty much from day one up until now, um, focused on that sort of collective and um, collaborative and, and cooperative sort of view as to how we, we address that. Uh, and certainly last but not least, um, I, I think, uh, the previous um, speaker mentioned about the, the importance of the facilitator, and I'm probably going to embarrass you, Helen, here, because um, without that level of facilitation and that commitment to certainly our, our group, um, taking uh, detailed minutes, getting the minutes out quickly, looking at action points, who's doing what, when that needs to, needs to be done, I think without that level of facilitation, the, the group certainly wouldn't have been as successful um, as it has been, so I, I think. So, uh, to sort of um, summarise a very positive uh, working group with, um, you know, real um, positive outcomes that have, um, that have come out of it. That's good. Thanks very much, Mark, and we're going to be very happy to answer any questions. Back to you, Megan.